Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. It's stage three of the Tour of Spain. It's an exciting finish on the stage. Dan Martin was exceptional with his sprint and his energy and his tactics before are spot on. He takes the front with about 200 meters to go with a big acceleration all the way to the finish to hold off Primoz Roglic and of course Carapaz from Team Ineos. All three of those riders, we've seen them already on stage one and two. And now on today's stage, another summit finish that literally is taking them straight up to the dirt road. Nothing, as soon as the pavement finishes, there's nothing but dirt road left. But before the climb, let's talk about at the start through the middle. Clearly the stage, because of the weather, the wind conditions, it made the peloton ride fast. They catch the breakaway with 50K still to go. That's a sign that the race is moving along fast. What I always like about the Vuelta, the stages are a little bit shorter, and so the speeds are always fast, and the stages are short in terms of time and explosive because of that. Nobody's afraid to throw in big digs. When we start the last climb, you'll see the Movistar rider, Mark Soler, yesterday's winner, he has a mechanical. This is a big problem and a hard time to get back to the front group. Inside the peloton, when they're reaching the climb, it's still quite a few guys. So I can imagine that Mark Soler, even after his teammates get him back to the tail end of the group, it's exploding back there and there's riders on the right side, riders on the left side of the road, and riders in the middle. He has to dodge his way through those riders as he's trying to make time. It is not rare when you're trying to make time after mechanical on the last climb that they'll guys will just block the whole road and you got to start yelling at them before you even get to them for them to open up a little bit of space for you to shoot through. More than likely though, at this particular moment, you have to tap the brakes, get back on the pedals again when they finally realize that it's a GC contender behind that's flatted and he's trying to go fast all the way to the line. Now we'll see Esteban Chavez flat too. His team is set up perfect for this. They do a great job. It's not going to salvage his time at the finish line. He's still going to lose from the GC guys, but it will help him not lose more time than he already did. You see right away his teammate waits. At this moment, because of the disc wheels, there's not even a chance of switching wheels because of you don't have the tools to pull the through axle out and switch, and that would take too much time. His teammate gives him the bike. Esteban Chavez is not a very tall rider, so on the video we'll see him standing quite a ways at first. Finally, he has to sit and ride it in on a bike that's going to be a little bit taller for him. That's going to cost him a minute. Again, he has to fight the whole time coming back when you have Ineos up there with four or five guys and the first three are just riding 100% at their maximum and pulling off to keep the pace as fast and hard as they can for Carapaz. When we get near the finish within the last one and two K, this is where Sepp Kuss from Jumbo Visma starts to do his magic. Okay, Sepp's been riding great since the Tour de France and you'll watch what he's doing at the front is just controlling the group. When there's an attack, he'll follow and bring it back. When it starts to slow, he'll keep the pace a little bit steady, not maxing himself out, but keeping it hard for guys to throw in the next, next dig. By keeping that pace from dropping down to zero speed, it allows his teammate, race leader, Primoz Roglic, to be able to follow any attacks that he deems is very dangerous to his red jersey. Sepp does a great job two or three times of actually covering moves and then being on the front for short moments of time while he's keeping the pace steady and smooth so that his team can actually follow any attacks coming from the back. Dan Martin, he was exceptional today. He plays all the right cards. Calm, steady, picks the right moves to follow, and then with 200 meters to go, blasts up the right side and wins this stage. Now, if you saw his interview after the stage, it was quite emotional. He hasn't won in a long time, and he's in tears while he's doing the interview. And folks, I've been where he is at at this moment. That's why I brought this jersey up, actually. This is the Tour of Utah jersey, uh, 2013. At Torino Adriatico that same year, early in the season, I messed up my knee. It's races in March. We're doing the last, second to last stage before the time trial. Uh, hard, rainy, cold stage. I had, because I ride out of the saddle, 
on all the climbs. I had to ride a different position so that I'm further back behind the saddle to keep weight on the back tire so it doesn't slip while we're going up the climbs because they are so steep on this particular stage. It ended up causing a knee problem from the cold in the different position while I'm riding. That knee problem lasted five months. I'm literally at home on the couch at my San Diego house watching the Tour of Italy go, watching the Tour de France go, and we're during this particular point in time, I'm 40, almost 42 years of age. I'm on my last contract with Radio Shack. The title sponsors are leaving. The team is changing and new sponsors coming in later. While I'm on the couch, I'm getting emails of different riders that are joining the team, but yet never getting a call from the team telling me my contract's renewed. So it's a stressful moment when you've had injuries like Dan Martin had or like I'm talking about, and then you come back and you get that big win again. It's really hard when you're talking to people because you're so emotional about it all the time. Once you cross that line, all that hard work that you've put into it just comes flowing out and emotions come. So it's really hard to control that feeling. So when I watch Dan Martin up there, I know exactly how he's feeling. And when I showed up at Tour of Utah, the team didn't, didn't even bring the correct bike for me. Okay, we had different, two different bikes that particular year and they brought the wrong bike to the race. Luckily, I brought my home bike with me so I was able to be on the same bike that I had been training on. And so when the Tour of Utah started and I won the Snowbird climb and took the race leader's jersey, it was very emotional. Later went on to win the Tour of Spain, of course, and get these jerseys behind me. But the first one in Utah was, was just incredibly emotional. As you see with Dan Martin, I love to see that kind of feeling and emotion out of him. I've raced with Dan Martin side by side and been competitive with him. I know the character he is. He's absolutely loves bike racing and just emotional all the way. Great win, Dan Martin. It's great to see you back on the top of the podium, and I'll see you guys real soon.